All right. Welcome to our fourth lesson on Louis Claude de Saint Martin's Ten Instructions to Men of Desire. The fourth instruction, the fourth lesson the explosion of forms and the necessity of the quaternary. So uh, any questions on one through three before we get this started? Nope. All right, cool. So let's just start reading from it. My brethren, as soon as the immensity of the spirits of the axis had modified the essences, which they had extracted from within to the extent of retaining impression that is, that they had give, distinguished between the three principles in the solid given to mercury, in the mobile given to sulfur, and in the fluid given to salt. It's unique, a perspective. From that time, everything took life from the vehicle of the central axis, which the spirits inserted into every body to serve as a common ground for the operation of these same spirits, for production, vegetation, and reintegration. From then on, the void which the scriptures spoke of came to an end. That is, of course, Genesis 1, 2. And the earth was formless without void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Um, that was all one sentence. <laughs> That's uh, an example of Saint Martin just going, going, going with semicolons. <clears throat> so there's a lot going on there, right? We have the spirits of the central fire axis. These spirits here on the left that form the outer, the ring past knot. They form the celestial immensity. They form, um, they begin to form what will become matter. And these are the, the spirits that carried within them the ternary word. They are the spirits that were emancipated, the ternary spirits that were composed of the undifferentiated salt, sulfur, mercury. Then last couple chapters, we saw how they differentiated and sulfur, Salt and mercury split off. Sulfur containing within itself a sulfur, salt, mercury. Salt containing within itself a sulfur, salt, mercury. And mercury containing in itself a sulfur, salt, mercury. So the three divides to the six, subdivides to the nine. At this time, they activate that innate force. So um, interesting, they, they say, well, I guess we've already gone over that. The solid is mercury in this case. Mercury is the last force, terrestrial or elemental. Salt is fluid, the waters. Fire, they call mobile, or you could say it's volatile in alchemical terms. So you could say that the sulfur is volatile and the mercury is actually fixed in this case, which is different from most alchemical interpretations. Um, again, Pasquale and San Martin are using the alchemical uh, principles in a completely different way than we normally see them used in alchemical and golden dawn literature of the Western Hermetic tradition. Um, next, we see that it's very, we, we capitalize the word life and vehicle because they're used as essentially proper terms throughout Martinezism. Life being like the, the animating force, the vehicle being the body, the clee, the vessel, um, which is formed by the spirits of the central fire axis. And then again, we have these, this first, this triplicity of action, production, vegetation, reintegration. Um, vegetation could also be growth. So we have like birth, growth, reintegration, birth, growth, death, birth, life, death, E-A-O. So this is an, this, these are the E-A-O forms of Martinezism. So let's continue. The void comes to an end when these spirits activate and they start to create matter. The void should be understood, only be understood as the lack of this vehicle in all bodies, the vehicle that carried the life from the essences. Like the scriptures tell that everything was without form, it must be understood as the neutrality of matter towards its principle, lacking the modification and distinction which gave, gave rise, which gave form to that which was without form and life to that which was deprived. So again, matter was in an, an indifferent state. It was inactive. It wasn't, it didn't exist until they differentiated, they divided and subdivided. In the self philosophical matris, matter was neutral as the spirits of the axis had emanated from themselves. Then there's a one, two, three given here. One, 
the spirits of the Axis modified it, and as soon as its principles were distinguished from their mixture, everything received form. Two, as soon as everything had a form, in order to form life or the movement of all bodies, they imparted their vehicle to the central act of the central axis to all their bodies. Three. Um, yeah, the numbers are backwards on that. The, the numbers, the n- numbers should have been before the sentence, but I decided to preserve it because that's how Sam Rutan wrote it. So one, matter was neutral. Two, they modified it. Three, they gave the vehicles. Section two, the minor, the four, to preside over the six thoughts. Um, Let us stop here. The spirits of the axis, having done all this work, had fulfilled the law, precept, and commandment, 1087. I've seen it before been 874, but usually it's 1087, law, precept, commandment. Being innate in them from the time of their emanation, by accomplishing the six thoughts of the eternal contained in the equilateral triangle, an image which the eternal had conceived for the creation of the universe and the one who's to preside over it. That one being man, the minor, or um, Adam Kadmon, who had become man. And in the ternary verb residing in the center of the triangle, as we discussed earlier, symbolized here by this triangle being a tetrahedron, as represented the diagram of the previous discourse, clearly given the idea of the ternary number. Since no man in the universe could deny that the angle of the west is not the angle of the south, and the angle of the south is not the angle of the north, and the angle of the north is none of the two others, thus clearly conveying the idea of the ternary number. The verb, which was in the center, is also ternary, as I'll demonstrate in the following diagram. And that diagram you see there, that is the circle from the associate degree. The three circles of man. That's awesome. Consider the triangle here inscribed in three circles. It is not necessary to be a mathematician. Nature acts more simply than the preceding factual and purely material procedures. Number three, the equilateral triangle emanates from the center. It is only necessary to have eyes to see that it is the center which generates the triangle and not only the triangle any figure. Everything comes from the center, from the one they're saying. To convince oneself of this, one only has to look at the difficulty of drawing an equilateral triangle without its center, being easily drawn once you start from there. So once you have that center point, you know, using a compass, using uh, geometric tools, it's very easy to do. Otherwise, just eyeballing it, you know, we can get close, but you're, it's going to be really hard to make a perfect equilateral triangle. Once you have it, you have equidistant in all directions at 60-degree angles. So that's his mathematical or geometric proof that everything comes from the center. Nature always chooses the easiest way. It's a term we we use a lot in the Golden Dawn. We're talking about how your magic will manifest. Nature takes the easiest course. Nature always chooses the easiest way, and everything which is not marked with this seal must be regarded as apocryphal. Not only does the center generate the triangle, but it also is its life. The three lines proceeding from the center show us its close relationship with the three angles. If this relationship were to cease, this equilateral triangle would be dead. That is, it would have another form which would not be its own. Now the figure of the equilateral triangle containing all the co-eternal numbers cannot have an end, since it was created or emanated by the direct thought of the eternal. Again, there's Saint Martin not being clear with the terms created and emanation. Number four, operations of the three angles within the vehicle. Now, that which issues from this ineffable and imperishable source is positively the plan of the spirits of the access, as I will make clear. Is it not true that once the three principles, mercury, sulfur, and salt, it would be nice if he actually used the same order all the time, (laughs) become distinct, became distinct, They formed all the bodies of the universe. I will stop at that of the general body, or the earth, which is an equilateral triangle. Remember, we've talked about how the base of this diagram, the bottom, the terrestrial form, is both the macrocosmic form, philosophical form of the world, as well as the microcosmic form of man. 
And inside of it is the terrestrial soul carrying the quaternary number, the quadruple or quadruple divine essence of yod heh vav the lost word. <clears throat> I will stop at that general body, the earth, the equilateral triangle. Is it not also true that the three terrestrial angles, or of whichever form, would be without movement, vegetation, or production without this vehicle being the life of all bodies? So he's equating that the vehicle is this equilateral triangle. And that only because of that can it have those principles of movement, vegetation, production, which again become production, vegetation, reintegration. Now we can clearly say physically that this vehicle is ternary. Through one of its modifications, it operates on mercury. Through another, it operates on sulfur. And through the third, it operates on salt. If it did not have this ternary number, it would not be able to operate on the three principles of the various bodies. Through an unchanging law, which the eternal has established in the universe of spirits, as well as that in that of bodies, so that no being may be united with another if it does not have the principles of the nature of that being. It's interesting. No being be, may be united with another if it does not have the principles of the nature of that being. Now all the bodies of the universe are united with each other, thus clearly proving, proving that they all have the same principles. So we see that the life of all bodies must necessarily be ternary in order that we may be able to maintain the three principles of the mixture of which they are all composed. Number five, withdraw, withdrawal of the vehicle, removing it, produces reintegration. So now he begins to define the physical version of reintegration. This is so true that the withdrawal of the vehicle produces what is commonly called the death of the body, which we call reintegration. If there are some unconvinced about this, here's an experiment to convince them. When you seek far into the universe, O oh man, you ignore that my works are near to you. Look for them, not in books, which are collections of the vain imaginations of your fellow men, but in my simplest works. Look into your own center to convince yourself that the reintegration of the bodies results from the withdrawal of the vehicle. Now, you're going to see a lot in this uh, text and in reintegration of beings as well, but even more so in this text, about this concept of physical reintegration, of the death of the body, that it is the vehicle, meaning the symbolic form of the triangle, withdrawing itself, withdrawing itself, therefore withdrawing the life, because you can't have the life, it says, without the vehicle in it, right? You can't have this, this lost word animating without the vehicle. Um, but I would also say that the way that we use reintegration is very different from this as well. This is indeed a valid interpretation of reintegration, but there's also the inner spiritual experience of it, which is a death, but it does not mean we literally have to die. It does not mean that our body has to die. The whole point of this, of this work of the outer order of any of this is to experience death in life to experience a spiritual death before a physical death and attain that which we call the world's secret through that death. So he's going to go on to explain the three essences, sulfur, salt, mercury, in a match, a matchstick. Observe that you need to take this vehicle, firstly, from a fire, number one, transferring itself to that of a stone that you strike it upon, number two, finally giving rise to explosion into a more subtle fire, being that of sulfur contained in the flame of the match, number three. One may consider the fire of this match as a generator of the fire of the wood. The match, number one, causes the fire of the wood, number two, and that of the wood causes that of the air, which is the flame, number three. Let us now see their reintegration. And let us begin with air, which he gives to salt. The smoke, number one, begins to reintegrate with its principle, the air or the salt. The fire, number two, reintegrates into its solar principle or sulfur. And finally, mercury, the solid body, remains on the surface of the earth, making up the ash, number three. Let's see what we wrote in the footnote here. In the case of a match, 
Mercury is the solid, the earth, the ash. Uh, sulfur is the solar, the fire, the flame. Salt forms the air, the salt, the smoke. <clears throat> okay, interesting. <laughs> Number seven, the action of the ternary verb upon the three essences. We see through all these examples that matter has taken form through the arrangement of the three essences and that these forms have life from the vehicle. The same is true of the rupture of the philosophical mantras, being due to the withdrawal of the doubly powerful spirit of the creator, who kept all the forms contained in the mantras deprived of movement, i.e. the state of neutrality or indifference before the three essences were modified by the spirit of the central fire axis. Um, interesting that he puts here the rupture of the philosophical mantras. Um, which is a similar term to the shavira of the, or the breaking of the vessels in Lorianic Kabbalah. But as soon as he saw that they had been formed by the spirits of the axis, that they had acted following the thought of his eternal father, the verb of the father broke the barrier he had set on all the bodies and traced out the various operations they should follow to them all, as well as to the various divine spiritual beings who were in charge of them, by way of the divine spiritual acts, as well as the laws of the different corporeal beings. This idea of the withdrawal of the doubly powerful spirit, the withdrawal of the eight, who kept forms contained, then there was a rupture that occurred. And then the operations were laid, <clears throat> like a master mason drawing the patterns on the trestle board. And then everything went into existence. Number eight, formation of the general body within the center of the universal circle. General body being this terrestrial form, the macrocosmic earth. Now the rupture of the philosophical matris, or what is commonly called chaos, the matris being chaos, being undifferentiation, formless and void, <clears throat> began to develop due to the position that the general body, guided by wisdom, came to occupy in the center of the universal circle. Because of its triangular form, the general body should be the central point of the operation of the whole, various bodies of the whole universe, as I'll demonstrate even better later on when talking about the celestial bodies. Footnote 139. No. Lost where I'm at. Refer to the universal table. Universal circle from less than 3.7. Sam Rattan specifically universe, relates the universal to the central fire axis. So talking about spe specifying our terms. Central fire axis, is, this is the universal, which is within the super celestial immensity, the immensity in which all emanates and takes form, which comes into being before the celestial immensity, which becomes matter. The celestial bodies are the planets within the celestial immensity, Saturn, Sol, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Luna, then Earth. Earth is considered a body in the yellow cone, or a planet. Um, general body equals the terrestrial immensity equals the Earth, this lowest triangle which forms a central point of the whole universe. We'll return to that in a second. The general body, Earth, taking position in the center of the universal circle, brings to mind the formation of the Kabbalistic Sephirot in the form of concentric circles spiraling outwards, wherein Malkut forms the central and the most dense Sephira. Um, let's do a little interlude. Page 176 we're going to return to. Remember that. Let's go take a look at another diagram for a moment. There's the tree of life in a sphere. Malkut in the center. Keter at the outside, getting denser and denser and denser and denser as it goes in. You will also see it going the other direction as well. But generally, tree life in a sphere, concentric circles, everything comes into the center from the outside. Ein Sof, then Absolute then Bria, then Yetzira, then Asiya. 
Now, returning to that concept that he just said there about um, concentric circle being in the center, usually we look at the diagram of the universal table with the triangle at the so-called bottom, right? Like the way we see Malkut at the bottom of the tree. But we can also see it right here in the center. You can see the equilateral triangle being here in the center just as it is here in the right. And that's one thing I'd like to point out is let's look at this. We have three circles here in the universal table, three circles over here in your associate LU initiation. You're, you're being shown the universal table. The outer circle being that of sulfur, then the waters, then mercury in this case. Just wanted to point that out. Any questions, comments before you continue? Really cool. <clears throat> okay, so page 176. As soon as the general body had taken its place, Earth, the particular bodies took their places. The particular bodies being the beings, such as animals and man, which inhabit the terrestrial immensity. So all the microcosms. <clears throat> but not just man as a microcosm, but all bodies. All, like, animals and shit. Also determined for them by the divine wisdom of the Father. <clears throat> Again, we see the ternary number in the universal circle. The general body and the particular bodies. It is from the unity of action of these three classes of being in the universe that everything has a passive life, a receptive life, and that the law of apparent forms subsist during the course of their vegetation, production, right up to their reintegration. As we can see in the eyes of the form, that without the spiritual action of the spirits of the central fire axis acting unceasingly on all bodies, on the central axis vehicle, which they inserted into them, without the reaction of the solar star, nothing, being without vitality in the surface, could produce anything. So we're seeing how he's starting at very simple concepts, and he's building, 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 building. Now that we understand the spirits of the central fire axis and the three alchemical principles, we can talk about their division, their subdivision, them going from passive to active, from differentiated, undifferentiated to differentiated. We can go into the bodies. We can go into the vehicle being inserted into them by them, and then life being put into them, production, growth, reintegration. And then now he's starting to talk about the solar star. We've mentioned that twice now in the past couple of paragraphs, from the match being... The sol showing the solar aspect of the fire. Now he's talking about the solar, the solar star that will be within that vehicle. Number nine, the triangle and the verb, the three essences and the vehicle. Note well, brethren, that as soon as the universe was in its place, like the eternal had conceived in his thought, it was presented by our divine master, who presented his accomplished work so that he, could, he would deign to give it the seal of his blessing. Dare I say, he stamped it. We have a big thing for stamps up here, if you aren't aware of that already. It is this blessing, or this dedication of the universal temple to the eternal, that allows us to conceive of the principle of the quaternary number by way of the body, and of the septenary number. In the above, I have shown that the universe, being centenary, in its double ternary of apparent form in the form of life, was made according to the plan which the Eternal had given to the various spirits of the axis by way of his ternary verb in the center of the triangle. Footnote. Let us consider the previous lecture on the six thoughts as the manifestation of the ternary verb. A ternary for the material, a ternary for the interior life, i.e. a double ternary or a centenary. So below and above. So to make it simple, God had a plan. He communicated it to the three who manifested it above and below. <laughs> Number 10, God uniting with the quaternary and the centenary. The quaternary number, four, obtained its principle through the union which the eternal had made for the whole universe in dedicating it to himself and in giving vitality to all the spirits all the life and all the forms, and in serving as a vitalizing living center with the eternal life for the divine spiritual beings and a life of production, vegetation, and reintegration during the course 
the form, all the forms of the universe. So this life is during the course of their forms, during the course of manifestation. God is so vitally essential to the duration of all beings of the universe that a grain of sand cannot have a form unless it is united to him. The grain of sand contains the three essences and the vehicle, six. Here he clearly defines that the vehicle is the six. It is the division. Three, division, subdivision is nine. But no, consider what just said that. Three essences plus the vehicle, three plus three equals six. This is very interesting. Here's where he, they show a clear departure from Barbalite Gnosticism, from um, dualistic Gnosticism into theosophy, true theosophy. Not that Madame Blavatsky bullshit. Um, but the theosophy that nature is not to be abhorred and that nature is not to be divorced from God, that God is to be seen in nature, that, which is also the Kabbalistic philosophy. Malkut is the kingdom of God. It is the light of God. It is the manifestation of deity. And it is supposed to be regarded as holy. It may be fallen in its present state or in our perception thereof, but part of this work of rectification is to rectify that light, rectify matter. So it does once again reflect the eternal. So that the son and the daughter face each other just as the father and the mother must face each other. Now the vehicle itself, dualism has a necessary phase in initiation, and that is, it has a necessary phase in it. But in the ultimate sense, nature is to be seen as divine. And that is why your tr two true books are the book of man and the book of nature. Any comments on that stuff before we continue? Now, the vehicle itself can only have life if it is vitalized, i.e., so the French term here is vivifier, with an accent aigu. It could also be rendered as vivified, but we chose vitalization as a better term for the later, because later he uses the word, later when he, we wanted to use it as an active verb, vitalization we thought was better than vivification. We thought it was just clear. Vitalization is necessarily of God who maintains unceasingly all the universe of beings, making up the quaternary number. The essences being number one, the form being two. Notice that two is division, right? So form. The life being three, ternary, equilateral triangle, and the vitalization being four. Um, there's, there's a lot to read into this here. Okay, and this is something that you should definitely study when it comes to numbers. Another way to look at this from the footnote one is the three essences, two is the form, three is life, four is vitalization. Um, this is the quaternary process of how all things come into being, one, two, three, and four. One being deity, two being separation, three being the life inserted, four being that life activated, vivified, vitalized. So therefore, all things contain these, right? Just like one plus two plus three plus four equals 10, Malkut, the kingdom, equals divinity, the denary number, 1, 0, 1 equals 10. All these Kabbalistic numbers we're familiar with from Hermetic Kabbalah, from Lugianic Kabbalah, all tap into that sentence right there. There's a lot to meditate there. In the same way, the division of the three essences, three in the life of forms, forms the centering number, six. Eleven. Vitalization through the septenary. So it vitalizes through seven. There's a diagram here of a hexagon with a central point, just like we had with the triangle, right? With the equilateral triangle. Vitalize, in, did you ever play uh, Trivial Pursuit? It looks like the little Trivial Pursuit guy. Little game piece. <laughs> vitalization can only take place through the septenary. It is the ray divided six times, which is engendered by the center forming six equilateral triangles to show that the law of the eternal is universal, since it is impossible to describe a circle without starting from the center, just like the triangle. you got to find that center, then draw the compass. <clears throat> K 
he's, he can also say that those six equilateral triangles are six divisions from the center. Six plus the center of one equals the seven. The center is to the circle what the vehicle is to all bodies. Ignorance of the center makes a circle useless to whoever wishes to operate on it. And the withdrawal of the vehicle takes away the movement from any form, makes it putrefy, and makes the law of appearance cease forever through reintegration. So he's saying that without the center, everything starts to die, starts to putrefy, corrupt. Let us make the necessity of the quaternary number clearer. Central axis is one. Two, produced and maintained all the bodies of the universe. And three, the sun vitalizes them. There's that sun again, third time you mentioned it. Four, now as a central axis circle is in direct communication with the super celestial, it draws vitality, receives vitality, passing it on to them from the divinity. But note, Sur Celeste, the French word for super celestial, is Sur Celeste, which can, can literally mean above the celestial. We use the word, rather than saying above the celestial, we use the word or on top of celestial, like sur la table would be on the table. Um, we use the word super celestial because that's the general term most American or English Martinists have been using the past hundred years. Even though super celestial is kind of just not the right word. Um, this is the first immensity, super celestial, from the divine immensity in the universal table. You could also render it supra-celestial. Next footnote. Written more clearly, compare the description of the quaternary process to the previous page. One is central fire axis, the three essences. Two is form. Life, vivified from the sun, is three. Four, from God, through the supra-celestial. Thence, through the central fire axis, transmits the vitality to the being. So, the central fire axis transmits through the vehicle, the equilateral triangle, that quadruple divine essence, which animates all things. Number 12, the quaternary in all things. This shows us that from the cedar to the hyssop, from the insect to the elephant, from the whale to the ichneumon, which is a species of wasp, everything in this universe owes its existence to the formidable quaternary, to yud -Vav -Heh, to the divine word, as being that of the divinity, complementing his indivisible, unchangeable, infinite, and unmovable, quadruple divine essence. Indivisible, because nothing can exist without his unity, and that outside of him, everything ceases to be, even as regards the divine spiritual life, because it falls into the death of eternal privation. Unchanging, because it never changes, its nature being inexhaustible, infinite, because it is co-eternal with divinity, without beginning or end, and unchangeable, because it is through the divinity that operates, that, because it is through it that divinity operates all emanation, all creation, all reintegration. You could see that as a triplicity too. Emanation, one, being divin, divine, being eternal, two, creation, oh, being form, being separation, being death and chaos, being a lie. Three, Reintegration, that perfect harmony found again. E -A -O. That again was a one sentence with lots of semicolons. Good old Samaritan. Finally, it is through it that the whole divine law operates on the most perfect beings of the eternal spirits, as well as on the most, the crudest beings with manifest forms on the surface, since nothing can have form, movement, and life except through it, and nothing can exist except in unity with it. Finally, it is what lets us see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the minor. Father, one, Son, two, Holy Spirit, three, minor, four. There's a mystery there. Or ten, eight, seven, four. So he's saying that all things are linked to divinity. Divinity is in all things. It is of all things. Um, 
as the Rosicrucian prayer. O God, the vast, the mighty one, thou art in all things, and all things art in thee. O thou, self, o thou self of nothing. In the following discourse, we will speak of the various products of nature. So what nature makes, what creation makes, and of the various forms of the universe. For now, let us observe, brethren, that everything I have said in the previous discourses, and what I have just said, proves to us that the universe had been formed and already begun to operate before man had left the bosom of the Creator. It will not be until the sixth discourse, how appropriate. With the help of the Eternal, I will deal of his emanation. Man being formed of the sixth thought, it is appropriate that he should come up at the sixth lesson. Questions, comments? we got about ten minutes if you guys want to talk about this at all. God in his abstract sense of the divine immensity, emanation of the first spirits being... 10, 8, 7, and 3. The prevarication of some of those first spirits who wish to set up their own law and separate themselves from divinity. They wish to try to emanate of their own. The emancipation or the sending out on a mission of the first ternary spirits, which became the spirit of the central fire axis, which carried within them the three essences and carried within them the quadruple essence the word. The story of them, of those three essences, being chaos, being undifferentiation and void until they activated them and brought them out from the, within themselves through the power of the word, through the command, the law, precept, commandment of the eternal. The setting up of the ring passed not, the barrier, so the prevaricating spirits could not influence the divine immensity, just as the flaming sword came down and guarded the way to the tree of life, and protected the supernals from the fall, the shattering. Um, the formation of the equilateral triangle, the insertion, there was macrocosm, eventually microcosm, the insertion of the vehicle to receive these principles, the vivification by the eternal sun of life within all these bodies, and now we're just starting to hear about the minor coming in unseen.